there we go. We're back again. I'm always so thrilled to be able to connect with these two lovely beings. I'm Aurora Light, and I'm here with Nina Infinity and Nicole Rose. And together, our superhero name is the Radiant Evolution Collective. And we have this habit of coming on just to have a chat on Mondays. We call them illuminating chats because we love to just pour some light on whatever is happening now in our lives, in the collective, and then just chat about how we're navigating it and uh, what's coming up for everyone. So I'm just going to edit the privacy of this post so it is public and people can see it. Because Facebook just wants to keep it to my friends, but this can be shared out far and wide. If you're watching on the YouTube replay, please like and subscribe. And if you're watching on Facebook, feel free to share. It's public now. And we're going to talk today about how we can direct energy using our soul's tones. And this is a very multidimensional way of playing with the word tone, which has so many different meanings. Everything from the, the like timber, the pitch, the um, essence of what you are sharing, but also the tone um, being like the, the literal energy of it as well and how that feels. And I can't wait to dive in, but first um, let's just say hello. How's it going, ladies? I am uh, doing good. <laughs> a few minutes ago when we hopped on, I was like, oh, I've been feeling some strange energy today and using all my tools as best I can to um, yeah, to shake it off and transmute it. So I actually loved this morning when I read what your write-up about the topic of the discussion today was going to be. I was like, oh, this is perfect. I can speak firsthand into not like not following the energy, but directing, co-creating with the energy and remembering that I don't have to. Like, so I woke up feeling super anxious and I was like, oof, was this mine? No, I send it back to return it to sender with love. But there was still some other stuff and um, right. I don't have to just sit in this all day. I can do things and change it. And so I've gone for a walk in the ravine, which was lovely. I did some I've done lots of toning lots of noise <laughs> coming out of me uh, meditation soul journey all sorts of things and then just having a little chat before we got on here today I was feeling like we have I have shifted some stuff mm, awesome how are you feeling Nina besides a little warm I'm feeling a bit toasty so I'm coming at you from my basement made a little um change right before we hopped on so Actually, my office is kind of hot. For those of you who are not in Edmonton, it's like 35 or something today Celsius. I don't know what that would be in Fahrenheit, but yeah, um, I'm doing pretty well. I Today feels like more of a, a chill day after a very busy weekend. So I'm just like coming into that breath. And um, yeah, I am always so excited to come in and chat with you lovely ladies and have some really cool um, experiences that I can share in a bit about toning and how that's been coming through for me lately. Mm, amazing. I love that you guys both brought up, you know, just about directing the experience as co-creators and like shifting things around because that I think is my favorite thing to do at the start of the week, which is why I originally started with setting an intention for myself and for the collective, which I always post on Facebook and Instagram. And today it was basically just like tone. <laughs> You're the, this is your invitation to set the tone for your day, for your week, for your life, right? And just a reminder that we do get to choose. Sometimes we can be feeling at the mercy of the energies of what's happening around us, of the heat. And that happens when we're basically feeling overwhelmed, not standing in our power, not like ourselves. And that happens when we get tired, when there's a lot going on, there's nothing wrong with it. But sometimes we, and I too, <laughs> need this reminder sometimes that we do get to choose. We can choose what we focus on and what we decide to bring through. 
And once we are aware that we have a choice to direct the energy, we're like, oh yeah, and some of our tools come back online. So thanks for just sharing how that has been coming through for you today. My energy update for myself personally is that I've been feeling actually really, really good and expansive. Uh, I was a little tired over the weekend, but today was the first day of summer camp. And my daughter is going to an amazing one where they do belief repatterning and all kinds of great things. And they're dressing up like Disney characters. And the cool thing for me is I don't have to only have childcare for like two hours on Monday. And Monday is the start of the week. And for the last year, it's been uh, an interesting balance to like do the work and the parenting all at the same time thing. And I loved it. And yet I felt this like opening relaxation and expansion going, I made it through this period of time where I was really juggling a lot. And now I can pick her up early, but there's less of that distraction energy and the like start stop energy that takes me out of what I'm doing. And I always pick Monday to like create content and do that because it feels really good to me, but it's been hard because you need to get into that deep focus space, which is not always possible with a tiny human needing sex. So I felt this really strong energy of like, I did it, I did it. I made it through that year of um, it being a little trickier to navigate. And now it's just, it feels like I'm opening up into this realm of what is possible now? What can I create now when I have a little bit more focused time and space? That reminds me of, um, so if, for those of you who've watched before, you might've heard that we all met through hoop dance. And I remember there was this time where I was hooping in like this small section of a bar and Aurora commented on that. And I was like, oh, I like the restriction because it kind of helps me to like, adapt and to tune into what I'm able to like fit into what spaces I'm able to fit into and then actually when you get into like a larger space then it feels so much more open and expansive so I love the, I love what you're sharing about you know showing yourself that you've you did it through this last year and then now that you have even more space you're like ooh, what else could be there's like this wonder and this curiosity around that so I love that Thank you for bringing that up. I remember that so distinctly because you had been hooping for longer than I had. And I was just so impressed at your ninja skills. Like picture this, it's a busy hallway space at a music festival. And she is hula hooping with like two feet of space in front of her against a wall where she has maybe like 10 feet of space um, horizontally. And she's just like being a ninja and getting down and grooving. And at that time, that was way out of my capacity. I would have been smacking people left and right with my hula hoops. So at Starlight? Uh, it was at Act of Fool, one of the, I think the first one that I went to in like 2008, I'm pretty sure. So this was going back quite a ways to our rave days. <laughs> and um, I was so impressed. And I, that lesson that you said always stuck with me about how limitations were something that actually foster so much creativity. And then I began to play with that in my own practice. I had mentors, including you, that would force me into those limitations that were artificially placed around me. And yeah, when they're there, then you have to think out of the box. You get out of your normal rhythms, normal patterns, and you're creating new pathways of movement, new opportunities and belief systems. And then when the limitations are removed, you're just like a bigger badass right? Like you can do so much more because you've cultivated this new stuff. And honestly, just to go on a tiny bit more expansion of this tangent, I think that's one of the reasons people like us love coming to earth, love to incarnate on this planet of this denser physicality where it is tougher to create because we want to become more badass at creating, but creating in this denser physicality where it's, it's not just instant. Most of the time we have to like plant the seeds and get used to directing the energy in ways that, that take more time and more energy and more forethought as conscious creators. So yes, I love hula hooping as a metaphor for life and how we navigate it. It, it works on every level. Love that just so much mastery in that experience. And then also like, here on earth school. <laughs> we are here to become masters. Yeah. 
yeah, I was also oh knocking stuff over, not used to being in this space. <laughs> mm, that also reminds me of when like I used to teach hooping and people would start hooping in the middle of like the winter. And I'd be like, just wait, just wait until summer comes and you get to experience what it's like to hoop outside with like no ceilings and nothing to hit. And, and it's really interesting because, um, you know, different places around the world are starting to come out of this restriction. So, so it's, it's interesting to, to, to feel this like new liberation and this new freedom. And not only with restrictions that have been placed upon us with regards to like safety and like um, distancing and things like that, but like the energies that are shifting as well. And it does really feel like a, a, a renewed sense of like liberation. And as people are coming out of this, like have not having seen people for a long time. I'm actually recognizing in friends of mine and family members as well, there's these subtle shifts and sometimes not even subtle, sometimes pretty profound shifts that I've noticed in these energies of people just like standing taller and being more in their power. And I'm just, I'm really fascinated to see as we continue to move into more of this like freedom and, and people interacting again, how, people meeting people again this time all this time later will be if we'll be able to notice shifts in them and I'm curious if either of you have noticed that in people that you've seen in in person or um yeah you know I was actually just thinking when you were talking about how it really applies to that macrocosm and the soul tones like everybody had this invitation to go inside and to get quiet and to have all of the distractions and things that weren't really truly them kind of fall away for most people. There were some people that didn't have that opportunity, those who work in healthcare and things like that. But when you have that opportunity to go inwards, then you get to know yourself more, right? It's this invitation to understand yourself at a deeper level and your authenticity. And I have seen so many people across the board change, right? Some really got to know themselves at a better level. Some people actually realized that maybe they actually liked some more silence. They liked that time to themselves. They love not rushing around. They love not being so busy with all of the outside things to be able to refocus. I've heard people, you know, come to new uh, career decisions, a lot of relationships shifting. It feels like, I think, well, we know that nobody made it through 2020 and the beginning of 2021 without changing dramatically. The question is, did people really take that invitation to go inwards and and dive in, or did they decide that they just wanted to sort of like numb it out and survive? Right, and I've, I can kind of see the difference between the people who decided to go on the deep dive and how it really shifted them into that standing taller place. And for some, um, their their invitation is to go deeper into the healing because it maybe brought up more trauma that hasn't been able to be loved yet enough to be healed. I don't think that I've even seen people enough yet to notice. <laughs> um, it's actually, it's been so strange. I'm like, oh my God, it's actually happening. We're actually going to be able to see people again, like legally starting on Thursday. And I'm like, oh, I feel weird about it. And I think it has a lot to do with where I was before COVID happened, which was uh, dealing with a concussion. And it really made my life so much more like everyone, like I didn't feel like I was missing out anymore because nobody could go do anything. So every, and I got to do so much more actually because of being able to be on Zoom um, to do things. And now that I see people going out and doing stuff again, I'm like, oh, weird, I'm not used to this. I'm like, am I actually as excited to go out as I think I am? I'm not sure um, I am, but I think I have like, maybe some like collective trauma of like, oh, is it safe to go do that? I'm not sure. And um, to work through <laughs> before I go do that. I don't know, it's very strange. And if that's all of that's coming up for you watching this right now, that's also strange, but it's also normal, I think too. I think there's a lot of, like when something happened that quickly, the way that the pandemic did starting in our lives, like changed overnight, that's definitely bound to, you know, cause some trauma and just different reactions that we couldn't necessarily process because we were still going through it until now. And 
now when that period ends, that's when um, we're able to actually begin to process that whatever came up for you that you weren't able to deal with at the time. So I don't know why that's coming through, but that is <laughs> important tone I need to share, I guess, today. And that's also, yeah, part of my experience, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. But I do resonate, no, I was just going to say, I do resonate that I have seen, you know, tons of people going within, at the very beginning of the pandemic, I was like, oh boy, everybody's getting sent to their room and they have to think about what they've done and, like, <laughs> and they can choose to do with that what they will. Some people will resist that and not want to look inwards and, um, but lots of people have. So I think it's definitely been instrumental in the uh, awakening of the world. I think everybody is... I think you'd be hard pressed to find somebody that doesn't think maybe a little bit more deeply about things than they did before this all started. Hmm. I was going to say thank you for bringing that up because I actually saw a few posts from different people today on Facebook that actually were speaking into that um, mild anxiety. And for some, it's related to health. For some, it's related to the fact that they're feral now and they don't know how to interact with people anymore, that maybe they've changed so much that now they're going to be meeting people, you know, in a completely different way. And I think for some, there can be some anxiety about meeting with the masks off because we have, for better or for worse, I don't believe in such things, but we have changed so much over this last year and, and we're reconnecting and the opportunity is to connect at that more authentic space as opposed to putting back the, the social masks on. And um, I'm excited to see and to invite people to come out and, and play as this new version of themselves who has been through the cocoon, the collective chrysalis and is emerging in a different form. I love what you said about taking our masks off. Like that's um, obviously a literal and metaphor metaphorical situation, <laughs> like um, thing for the situation and yeah, I think that there's definitely for myself and a lot of people that I know, there was like this deepening into, yeah, a deeper level of authenticity and like rawness because when we can meet ourselves in those places and when we can also like for myself in particular, I've been really greatly supported by both of you and some other amazing people in my life during this time and as I've gone to those depths and I've met myself there and I've also been met there with other people it's like I've been learning that it's safe to be that and to take off that mask in certain situations in safe situations with support with love and then it makes me feel a little bit more brave to open that up open up in that way in a grander sense and it takes practice and it's like sometimes it can feel like baby steps but um yeah it is definitely been a process and a significant process for me around leaning more into like that deeper levels of authenticity and and taking those masks off in, in safe safe way safe places I was laughing because I meant metaphorically completely. I forgot that we had been literally wearing masks. Same. So I wonder what if, you know, part of this whole mask on process, which I know was very controversial, especially in some spiritual circles, but what if it actually was an important process for many people to go through the actual physical wearing of it and being like, I'm hiding behind this mask and really bringing consciousness to it and then taking it off suddenly and being like, here I am world. I'm wondering if that might've been a really essential step in that metaphorical mask taking off process that we're going to be deep into right now. That's so powerful. Yeah, I feel like it will. And it's something that I, you know, haven't really thought about until, yeah, because we haven't been there yet. And it felt like it was like forever that it was going to happen. And now it's happening here on Thursday. <laughs> um, yeah, mandated anyway. Some, I saw a lot of stores are actually in places are still keeping that in place. So I'm like, oh, that's interesting to see how that will be received by certain people that <laughs> are not so interested in doing that. But um that's just a side point. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, we always have to look at what the divine perfection of everything is, and we can't always see it and understand it at the time until we actually go through the process. And um, I know for myself, I have been a little bit like, oh, I do like kind of having that, that the mask on <laughs> because I do like, I'm like, oh, I don't have to show all of myself when I go out in public. And so I have a funny story today. I had to go take my car to get my winter tires removed on the freaking hottest day of the year because <laughs> I didn't do it yet. And I'm like, this needs to be done. <laughs> um, and I was feeling like, because like I mentioned earlier, like anxious and like interacting with people. I'm like, oh, I don't want to interact with people today. And I was like, at least I have my mask. Like it does actually, it provides me a lot of safety, which I didn't really think about until right now as we're talking. Um, so that will be an interesting thing for me as well to go through in the world and being mask free again. Hmm. I have more to deal with than I thought that I did as we talk through this all. But you know, I have gone through, you know, as you were saying too, like a lot of that same kind of experience during the pandemic of stripping away so much of who I was not in conditioning and being more comfortable with showing like, hey world, I can, you know, when I talk about, like, I get a download or something, or I receive information, it's like, I'm channeling information. And I've been sharing, like, more and more of that, or like, hey, I can speak light language out loud. And like, this is who I really am. So just doing it in these little safe, step by step ways to show the world that this really is me. And um, it's interesting, when I think back to like, about, I don't know, 10 years ago or so, I was so interested, or it was so wanting to show who I was, but I didn't, wasn't grounded in who I was yet. I didn't have that so sovereignty. And I really, I really tied being spiritual with being a hippie. And I didn't want to show up in the world as a hippie, but I wanted to show up in the world as um, being, like, being like that. And Man, I looked through some like an old note that I found from my from journal entry or something from back then. And it was wild how much this was like, how much I was restricted by that. I couldn't show up because whatever beliefs I had about hippies and like not being accepted in the world, I couldn't show, <laughs> show up as my true self. And it's so funny because you don't need to be a hippie to be spiritual. You just need to be yourself. <laughs> like, I didn't get that at the time and that was a huge learning so if you feel like you need to be like i don't know if you like yoga and you like need to wear lululemons and do all these things or like whatever thing you're into you don't need to you know do all check all the boxes to look like that being yourself in every moment is a spiritual experience like you don't you don't you don't need to do anything just be yourself that's the most important thing Yeah, we don't have to fit in the boxes um, of what's prescribed and what's, you know, perceived as a certain label. I've definitely had that come up for myself in the past where I'd, I'd be like, oh, I want to say this or I want to dress like this or I want to act like this, but that's not something that I would do. So it's really interesting to just notice where are those limitations that we're imposing or those restrictions that we're imposing on our on ourselves, because we don't think that that's something that is something that we can or, or should do in the image that is projected upon us by other people. But ultimately that's an image that we're assuming that they have of us. Um, and like one of the most attractive, amazing things to see that, that I see in others is when they're fully fucking embracing who they are unapologetically and they're just going for it. That's the most attractive thing for sure. Um, I don't mean like necessarily sexually attractive, but I just mean like magnetic where it just pulls you in and you're like, who's this person? I want to hang out with this person. This person's a cool, <laughs> this person's a cool being. Um, yeah. So, so much, so much to reflect on around all of this that's, that's coming up in this conversation and kind of side note back to this, um, question that you're asking about masks aurora i actually have been like um 
as I've worn masks in public, I, I'm like often like like mouthing the words of songs underneath my mask. And I'm like probably gonna keep doing it after <laughs> I'm not wearing one anymore. <laughs> this is kind of funny to think about because there was times where I was like, I'd rather not because it's hard to breathe and all the things and you know, you get used to it as time goes on. But I was, then I would realize, oh, I can just like, you know, sing, talk to myself, nobody's gonna see. <laughs> So it's kind of funny how we uh, adapt <laughs> and see the silver linings and things. I've heard a lot of people going <laughs> that they feel like they're going to get in trouble because they have stopped holding back the emotions, right? If they are um, unimpressed, right? They will, they will show that, they will share that, they will mouth the words that they would like that person to maybe not hear, but to feel <laughs> the energy of. So it is, it's gonna be a really interesting practice for all of us to start to embody and live more of our own soul tones, right? Our true, unique, authentic self in that unmasked way, in that unapologetically bold and sexy way. Yes, I agree with you 100%. People that are fully being themselves and expressing and not holding back because they're worried about what they look like, that is the most magical magnetic thing ever. I actually have a story about this. When I was 24, I was taking uh, some dance classes. I think it was funk at D Decidedly Daz Jazz Dance Works in Calgary. And um, I was watching the teacher and I was like, I'm doing the same moves, but I do not look as cool. Like what is the magic sauce? Why does it look so much better when she does it? And looking back, I was able to realize over time, it was the, I don't give a crap what it looks like, or I know it looks good, like just fully committing to it 100% without worrying, without holding back, without putting a mask on, without the, the film that we so often try to hide ourselves under. And as I've moved through life, I have realized that that trying not to be witnessed or perceived or not fully being expressed actually is almost more noticeable for one sometimes because you can like feel the awkwardness you can feel the self-consciousness um but that that doesn't really matter that freedom to fully just be and express is something that i got through dancing and actually going to to raves to music festivals just feeling that freedom to be able to do that and then later in hula hooping and it was lovely to realize and witness years later oh i am at that place where i i can dance like no one's watching or like everyone's watching and it's the same thing right and it was it was unapologetic but it took me quite a bit longer to be able to live my life that way right to be able to show up like i danced in life and i might have talked about that last week and it's just it's a process and we're always evolving so maybe there's even deeper levels and layers of authenticity you know that we can be every freaking day as we learn more about ourselves and our true like intergalactic multi-dimensional nature this makes me think of uh, also i don't know 2011 is like showing up in my stories today for some reason when i was at hoop camp and i guess all the hooping stuff too so i uh had the realization there as well i'm like i don't need to be like like i just want to be authentic that's what i need to be and i'm like i don't know what that means but like i need to be me and i thought i found it and i remember stopping this hoop teacher and she was clearly if she actually asked me like i have to go i'm going to do something i'm like but i just need to tell you this important thing because i'll probably never see you again and you in her workshop like helped me discover it and um <laughs> I'm like i found my authenticity and it was I finally got it like all those all those hippie people that I like so admired and wanted to be like but didn't want to show up in the world like it wasn't that they were being hippies that I liked it was that they were being themselves and that's what I was drawn to and I just didn't realize it they did have that freedom that secret sauce which was drawing me in and like that I was being magnetically pulled towards but I hadn't quite like until that moment really figured out that's that's what I need to be and I'm like oh well who am I then and you know that's been a fun 10 years figuring that out. <laughs> I love that. All of those breakthroughs that come through hula hooping 
can come through the larger world, but people get it through other things, through sports, through activities that you decide to master, right? Like when you give yourself the opportunity to practice anything where you have to move through levels and layers of resistance and, and into resilience and, you know, all of those things that test you, then we learn so much. So that is one of the most amazing things that can bring us into mastery in other areas of our life. I was having an interesting conversation with somebody the other day about um, about young employees. Actually, it was a pretty random conversation with someone who used to own a who owns a cafe, and I used to manage a theater where I sometimes had young employees who were like 15, 16, and um, they mentioned that they preferred to hire the ones that were involved in sports, right? And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> the kids or teens that had been involved in something that had pushed them towards mastering their craft were absolutely better employees because they understood resilience they understood how to take direction which is awesome um but also the not giving up right and this is something that i think we all learned through hula hooping um i also got it through like gymnastics and other organized sports right um it's just the gift of giving yourself a space to practice something that you can bring more of yourself to and you can uncover levels and layers of you that you maybe didn't know were there until you were tested. Right. And for some people, if they've never been in that pressure cooker of being tested, being challenged, then an outside event like this pandemic or something like that is the pressure cooker that is squeezing them beyond. Whereas if you've, I think, gone through some of those through whatever other experiences have come through, there's um, there, there was a little bit of pre-work that could be done. And I have no idea why we got on this tangent, but it just felt really important to talk about that you can find mastery, including spiritual mastery through everything you do, whether it's like hula hooping, playing basketball, cooking dinner, right? It's how we do one thing actually gets to be how we do everything, but it's offering yourself that opportunity to go deep and to dive deep into an activity. You get to go deep into yourself. I'm glad you're nodding because I was like, where is this going? Okay, I see where it's going. Yeah, I think it's beautiful in these conversations and just in general in life, just learning how to lean in and trust the intuition of like, why am I telling this right now? And just trusting that there's going to be codes for someone out there and for ourselves. I know collectively, often we just get so much from working together, whether we're hosting a ceremony or whether having a chat together, just like we're always like in life, our, our intuition can always be guiding us towards sharing something that another person needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those are our own unique tones, <laughs> which is, I think, where our conversation's going. <laughs> and that's what I was just about to say. It's it's learning to trust the tones, the words, the codes, the intuition that is coming through you and sharing it authentically without holding back. So everything that we're talking about, like dance and hula hooping, you can apply to just your, your speech, right? To sharing your voice, to sharing your authentic truth. And that can be done in all of these different multidimensional ways. And I have found, especially over the last year and a half of working really specifically with clients one-on-one -on -one and in groups, as we activate our voice through connecting with our highest self and multidimensional self, and then practice the embodiment of bringing that through and out, it does bleed over into every facet of life. I love using light language as an example of a vehicle that can take us there, right? Sharing our soul tones. Light language is when we're speaking the, um, the sounds, the codes that are coming through without English words, right? Or we can be sharing it with writing. For anyone that's never caught any of this light language stuff, here's an example of written light language. But it can be spoken, signed, sung, um, drawn, all of that stuff um, where we're sharing the information, the packets of information beyond words, beyond the logical mind, straight from the soul, straight from the source. And that's one way that you can share your soul tones. But I find, and my students really find, that the light language, 
will teach them that. It'll break through to being able to share the soul tones in speech. And I've had so many students that go, oh my gosh, this is so much more than I bargained for because suddenly I'm sharing my story. Suddenly I'm showing up more authentically in my business. Suddenly I'm storytelling on my Facebook lives in a way that I wasn't able to before. So sometimes a vehicle like hula hooping, which helped us share our authentic soul expression and flow or light language can just be the gateway into being able to do that in uh, all of these different ways. And it's, it's so much fun. Light language is so powerful and amazing to open up those channels. And, you know, when I first started working with you, I could feel like I, I wanted to express something and it wasn't coming out. And then through our work together, we really cleared a lot of that. And it's just so much has shifted and I'm able to speak so much more clearly and articulately now than I was <laughs> way back then. And I mean, it's practicing because I've done it every week. So that's going back to that. Um, what you were speaking to before about developing that mastery and you know you need to practice things to get better at them and also having that energy um, to be able to flow so much easier is you know it's just another way of practicing channeling and so powerful i've really realized in the last little bit as i've completed my first program that people are really there for me and my codes. And I understood that before, but I didn't really understand it until I went through the process and like, oh, they really do, are, they really are here for my medicine. And it's not that I'm like healing them, but I'm giving them the information that is relevant to their own healing journey and growth journey in the process. And um, it's not even just, it's not even what I'm saying, but it's the, what well, we talked about already, the code. So the yeah, there's like the medicine that's coming through just from hearing my voice and doing all the different exercises and my hands are like, oh, I'm going to do some light language now. <laughs> um, yeah, it's such a cool experience to see how each of us has these codes and tones for everybody else. And we really do all need to work together because while we can, like all three of us, all three of us speak light language and you know, I'm sure we all, we all dance, we all do a lot of the same things, but each of us will do it in a slightly different way with our own experience, our own codes, our own healing that is coming through. Um, and it's all, all magical in its own way and all unique. And, you know, that's true for beyond the three of us, that's true for everyone. I have to expand on that because so many of the people that come to me are entrepreneurs or they're wanting to be. And one of their biggest fears or limiting beliefs is that they don't have anything unique to share. And I'd love to explore with them that exact concept. It's that we are as coaches, healers, practitioners, space holders, the portal to an experience where people can feel in our field, our energetic field, the example that we are holding. And it can be beyond the information that we're sharing, you know, through the practices, through our words even, but it's from uh, just even the eyes, from the transmission of the tone beyond the words. It carries that multidimensional information that shows people what is possible. And everybody will hear it differently through different people. And that's the really cool thing. Even if your mission is not to bring through really unique information, maybe you're this alchemist and you're supposed to bring through truth that maybe other people have said before. And that's okay. It's truth because it's truth because it's truth, right? And, and it needs to be said by you as well, because how you are going to say it, the lens through which you say it, the tones that it comes through, they're what's going to land with some people. And I could explain something and you would have like no idea what I'm talking about. Actually, this is not a good example because usually you understand my tones, right? Because we work together. That's why we like working together. But there are maybe somebody else was saying something and you didn't get it. And I, I think this has happened to us lots of times before. And then I'll say the same thing and you're like, oh, I've heard that before, but I understand it now. And it, that would be what Sandra Walter would call the inner standing right, where it lands in a different way. 
even though it's the same information, it was because it was carried through with my tones in a way that will land and activate and resonate with your body. And I think that's probably happened with both of you before. Just, I'm not always sharing new stuff. It just makes more sense to you coming through me for some reason. Yeah, I, um, I can definitely relate to that in our uh, conversations where you've demystified some things and I'm like, oh, I get it now. Awesome. Um, and also I'm kind of thinking of, uh, you know, well, a couple of different things. First, I'll explain what's coming to me around the word code is that some, oftentimes a code unlocks something, right? So it's like when you type in a code into your phone, it's going to unlock your phone. And so as we share our own unique codes and tones with one another, that can unlock little things within us energetically. And it's like you said, um, it's it's the it's the frequency of it. It's the it's the tone of it, even in you know, our, our energetic signature. And so it's so beautiful that, like you were saying, individually, we all carry codes for certain people and they carry codes for us. And so, so there's this beautiful give and receive this flow. We're not meant to do it all alone. Um, we're communal beings and we all have those gifts for one another. And then I'm actually giggling in my head thinking about, um, you know, has there ever been a time in your life when you've said something to a family member or a close friend and you're like, you've pointed something out and they're like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. And then somebody else says the exact same things to them. And they're just like, I've had this revelation and oh my God, let me tell you about this. And da, da, da. And you're like, I said that to you last week. <laughs> so, you know, that's like, it's a literal, it's a, it's a real life example. Um, not only in like the woo energetic stuff, but like in the literal like day-to-day -day world where things can, um, go over someone's head in one regard and then just like really, really land in another regard. So like you were saying, Aurora, we can be sharing the same, like different teachers, uh, in various industries, um, especially like in the spirituality kind of um, personal development space can be sharing a lot of the same ideas, but the, the way that it lands with certain people, that's, that's the secret sauce. That's, that's what make it, makes it so unique. Um, yeah. So I love that. Thank you for bringing it home to an example that I think we have all had is it's especially special when it's like a romantic partner <laughs> like yeah I guess or even as a parent like you will say something to your child but then if a stranger or a teacher or an auntie says it it has far more impact which just goes to show how important it is for for kids but also for all of us to have a diverse set of friendships and relationships and experiences with different people because we all have codes for each other and it we pick up so much that we are not necessarily expecting and I, I think that's part of you know our co-creative experience here is we came with um not our full understanding and awareness of everything it would be too much for us to carry but like i have some codes for you and i have some codes nicole for nicole and you guys have some codes from me and you know our friends that are watching right now you have some codes for us and for other people and it is co-creative so there's absolutely nothing that we need to do on our own when it comes to like bringing that information through you don't have to know all of it already when it comes to your soul mission when it comes to your business when it comes to how to move forward in relationships it's important to talk things out with other people because it's not that they're going to tell you what to do it's that they're just going to have that little piece, like you were saying, Nina, a little code to unlock something within you that's an understanding where you'll just be like, ah, oh, I get it now, right? And that's the best feeling ever when you're able to provide that for someone, provide the code or the key, or when you receive it, when you're like, got it, thanks. That's all I needed was for you to say that one thing. And you're like, but I have more wonderful advice. No, nope, I got, got what I need. <laughs> right? It just unlocks things that are already inside us 
we have keys for each other. So fun. Also making me think about how important it is to sometimes just to speak something out and not let it like get stuck in your mind and ruminate on something and just vocalizing uh, whatever it is can yeah, gives you the process of being seen and witnessed in whatever it is. And sometimes just even talking it out also helps you understand it more as you speak and work through the process as well. So there must be some sort of uh, important piece <laughs> to that with the voice as well as, yeah, because you're just bringing it out into the world and it's not like this hidden, unseen misunderstanding within you or shadow thing anymore. You're bringing it out into existence, into the light and, and it doesn't need to be something that is, hmm, that needs to be ashamed of or, you know, hidden anymore. So it can start to work through that process. So just even that is so powerful. Plus when you get the little bitty of information that you need as well, <laughs> magic. And I think that circles back to what we were talking about with regards to the masks and take like gradually taking those off and sharing with trusted self safe spaces or in trusted safe spaces with, with people that support you. Um, that's been a big process for me. Sorry, I think there's a truck driving by. It might be loud for a moment. Um, <clears throat> but sitting with people and sharing and being seen and witnessed and relating because so many times i'll be sharing something to someone and they'll be like i feel you i've been through that and i like you know just being recognized in that way can be so um so validating and supportive to know that it's not just me and i'm not alone and that so many times a lot of our struggles aren't all that unique. There's this commonality that oftentimes there are similarities in, in our in our experiences. So sharing really can help me in that regard. And yeah, sometimes it just needs to be like what and like expressed and <laughs> said out loud and heard and seen. Uh, yeah, it's like it's kind of like verbal journaling to a friend in a way. That's kind of the way that I think about it. And it doesn't always have to make sense, but sometimes just having that like opportunity to open the throat and just say the words. And uh, this actually reminds me of something that I've been um, practicing lately when I've been in, uh, well, I got this idea actually. So from um, Amber Valdez on IG, she was doing some cold plunges like back in the the um, winter she lives in Texas so she could do cold plunges outside and she was actually toning so oftentimes when people do cold plunges like they might breathe really deeply some people might like scream <laughs> or yell because it's so intense but she was sitting there and she was going Ooh, and she was transmuting the intensity of her experience with the tone and so I've been doing that lately when I've been doing cold showers and it really is powerful because rather than feeling that like constriction in my body where I'm tensing, I'm like, oh my God, this is intense. I just like tone and it feels so much more uh, liberated to let that sound come through me. And just like it transmutes through my voice, through my tone, through my own unique codes, the, the sensations that are coming up for me. And then yesterday I stubbed my toe where I hurt my foot in some way, um, just like sort of randomly. I'm kind of klutzy. It's actually surprising that I was a professional hoop dancer because like I'm pretty klutzy <laughs> and um, stubbed my toe and immediately I started to tone. I didn't even really think about it. I just sort of like released a tone and it actually helped me to transmute the pain. It's actually it was just a sensation really. It helped me to transmute the sensation in that moment where it actually didn't feel, I, I don't think it felt like the same level of pain that it would have otherwise. So yeah, an invitation to everyone watching to get curious about ways that you can bring your own unique tone and voice into your day-to-day -day life in ways that you can help you to transmute energy um, as we were talking about last week. And also, yeah, just in in day-to-day -day moments, like opening up that expression, opening up your own codes. <laughs> Okay, I have two that go along with that so perfectly. And they're about, yeah, directing the energy, alchemizing it 
And the first is sometimes when I am getting really frustrated with my human, my tiny human, and instead of going to yell, sometimes I will just sing. <laughs> and it's great because it stops <laughs> both of us. <laughs> And that I'm not actually yelling, right? And it diffuses the situation, but I'm also getting out some of that energy instead of internalizing it, right? Like turning it into a musical number. And I, we will literally have singing conversations like, I am so frustrated with you right now. Can you pick that up off the floor? And then she'll sing back to me. And it, it just becomes something that turns into something joyful. But going back about five years before there, um, when you were talking about stubbing your toe and the energy and doing that in the cold plunging, I was like, oh yeah, just like when a woman is laboring, making sound is so good for transmuting the energy. I um, wound up being induced um, 42 weeks into pregnancy and you know, it was just, it was time to evict my daughter. And afterwards she said when she was older, yeah, I couldn't find my way out. So I felt really good with that decision. I was, you know, a doula and I knew all of the risks and everything, but intuitively it was, no, I had to kick her out. She was too comfy. And um, I made so much noise, but I did have a drug-free labor, say for a teeny bit of laughing gas right at the end, even though I wasn't able to move because originally I was going to dance my way through it, but I was strapped to a monitor. So I couldn't dance to move the energy around. So I made a lot of noise and so much so that when I was moving from one of the, the original rooms to like the actual labor room down the hall and I moved through, everybody in the waiting room gave me a huge round of applause. I had no idea how much noise I was making. But when you soften and open your upper mouth here, it actually opens everything below. So for any pregnant woman or women that are going to be giving birth soon, Give yourself permission to make some noise. Let your soul tones come through and let them flow out of you to direct and alchemize that energy. So I hope that wasn't too, um, too much information about how I process movement or song or just straight up noise. I love that. That's so amazing. Such a beautiful reminder because I think that that's how the ancient cultures would have coached women and you know still do as the lineages are, are maintained and brought through but it's obviously way less common these days, but that, I feel that that would be such an instrumental part of supporting a woman in, in giving birth. And I have a really fun story about your singing around like frustration. Um, I do that when I'm uh, driving and it's a way to like transmute like road rage. So if I'm like, if something happens, I'll just like sing. I'll be like, that was my turn, but okay, you went. <laughs> or like, if I'm at a force four way stop and I'm waiting for someone to go, I'm like, you go, then I go, and then that person goes. <laughs> and you can just like, just seriously try it. Try it and let me know if you try singing Road Rage. Um, it's, it, it totally shifts the energy. <laughs> I am gonna have to try that out. That seems like a wonderful technique to uh, <laughs> work through some road rage and also frustrations with my tiny human because whew, she can, especially getting her ready in the morning, my goodness, I will be doing lots of singing, <laughs> I think, <laughs> to get her out the door. Um, but that also did make me think about when I was birthing her as well. I was also, I also had a, a natural labor and used so much tone and so much sound and it was so helpful. Um, I also had planned dancing and my body was just like, nope, <laughs> I just needed to be in the in the tub. And I always remember thinking being so grateful for my Kundalini dance practice because we worked through so much toning in that and help and breath. It helped so, so, so much. And it was interesting. They asked me if I wanted to do it. Um, my doula and my midwife asked if I wanted coaching and or, or like I was, I wanted to do it. And I'm like, no, I want to try doing it on my own. And I was more so like singing through my kind of my my stomach area, my uh, solar plexus chakra area, and pushing outwards. And then that was just a lot of waste of energy <laughs> for a while. And eventually, they're like, maybe do you want to 
do you want some help now? And I'm like, sure. And they're like, how about try like pushing downwards? And I'm like, oh, like you just could have told me to like go through my root chakra and I totally would have been fine and gotten it. <laughs> um, but I did that and then like so much, so quickly she was out after that. So it was so awesome to even have that knowledge of like how to move tones and energy through my body because that's not something that like, you know, most of the population knows how to do. So, so grateful for all that wisdom that I had. Um, yeah, good birth a freaking baby <laughs> oh that's fabulous I haven't heard that story from you before and it it makes so much sense that that's exactly what we're talking about using your soul tones your voice to direct energy for creation and what could be more creative than you know making a whole another human being so I love how that is tied together <sighs> This is so rich, like our voices are creative tools. Um, we create as we speak and the word, just if you've never heard this before, abracadabra is not just a magic word that magicians nowadays use on stage. It is ancient Aramaic for I create as I speak. And in the beginning there was the word and the word was made the world, right? Like there are so many things, Om, the primordial sound, like sound, is creation. I just heard uh, James Wedmore, who's an amazing um, business and spiritual um, teacher, say, your word creates your world. Just breathe that in. And beyond the word, it is also like the sounds the tones can direct creation as well. So going beyond words per se, but right into that vibration, right? And with that can be carried the light codes, the packets of information. So there is so much richness. We could talk about all of this forever, but I think it's about time to start wrapping up our conversation. And I just want to invite people if they haven't ever used light language to direct energy or toning or anything like that. I'm actually doing a free master class on Thursday that I share my three secrets to activating your light language so that you can speak from the soul. And that's the voice activation part. And then it ripples out so much into becoming a conscious creator and creating your reality. So I'm going to leave the link for that masterclass in the notes. But we also do share light language and all these conscious creation and energy direction and frequency, um, conscious like, mm, what would be the word? Dire yeah, direction, like conducting the frequency of our energetic fields in the playground. So I'm wondering if one of you wants to share a little bit about what's coming up um, in the playground, if anyone wants to come and experience some of these things firsthand. I am not sure if I even remember all the things that are coming up, but I know our theme this month is Gaia and our connection to Gaia. Um, all three of us have such a strong connection with that um, loving Mother Earth energy. And we will be doing yes, some light language, belief repatterning around that. And Nelson, we talked about Nina. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah, so we're going to be co creating the ceremony in early July, dates to be determined. And then Aurora is going to be doing a, a, a entire uh, workshop around Gaia. Maybe you can speak more into that um, as our featured facilitator of the month. And then we always have live and recorded content and replays of all different kinds of practices to support us in staying and playing in alignment so that we can be more we can be more in flow throughout our day mm -hmm. and be more aligned and like focused and activated on what we're creating in this world exactly that's the big so that it's like why do we want to get in alignment why do we even want to play first off like play is the antidote to density and feelings of overwhelm. We just finished the theme month of sacred play. And so there's a ton of really amazing content in our library on 
giving ourselves permission to play, which is a need for humans in order to learn, grow, and navigate stress, but also so that we can become those conscious creators and remember who we really are, right? The fractals of the infinite that created the sun, moon, and stars who came to this density to experience creating in this form. And we love to support people in aligning their vibrational frequency to that place of possibility where you can manifest and create and just um, do the things that actually you, you came here to do that you want to do. And a big part of creation, conscious creation is working with all of the elemental forces. And that's my, one of my favorite gems working with earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. And Part of earth is really connecting in not only with the body and the physical structures and the forms and things like that, but, but literally the consciousness of the planet that we are in right now in co-creating with Gaia. And uh, I cannot wait to dive in deep. I'm not sure exactly what we will be doing, but I have led so many soul journeys to the center of the uh, creation caves that are within the earth where we get to tune in with that consciousness of Gaia and receive what it is that we need to come to that next level. Um, but she's, she's our biggest supporter and she can arrive as friend, mother energy, sister energy, um, it, it, because she's, she's a full conscious being, right? She's not just one thing and your relationship with her might depend on where you're at. But she is so much fun to co-create with. Like there are so many different energetic levels and realms that she can bring forward through us, including like her new earth realms that already exist that are just at a different vibrational frequency that I can have had the beautiful experience of bringing clients to. And like <laughs> some of them are literally blissful and orgasmic and some of them are just pure peace. And it's just so much fun to start to dive into cultivating and co-creating this conscious relationship with her. Because when you do that, you never have to be alone, basically. So I can't wait. I cannot wait. It's going to be so much fun. So we're putting in a little bit of the information about um, the playground. If you want to come and experiment, you can try out the membership as month to month with no um, contracts or anything like that. So you can come and play and see if it's for you. But also, like, if you would like to explore, play, journey with me to direct your energy through your soul tones, please do come to that masterclass. It's going to be Thursday at noon, and I'll probably run it for a couple Thursdays in a row. Um, and it is going to be an experiential workshop where you get to literally bring forward some of your own soul tones and feel that energy. That's one of my magical gifts is to support people in doing that in that authentic way that just feels so aligned and freeing. And it is um, going to be my pleasure to be able to bring groups through that activating process. And then there's also going to be a six week series for anyone that wants to dive in deeper and further, but it is free to just learn how to activate your light language. Come and play with that with me on Thursday. And if you can't make it live, the replays are always just as powerful. <sighs> so, ladies, Anything you want to share in closing? Sorry, I just went off about Gaia and light language. <laughs> I'm so excited about it all and so passionate. So thank you for listening. <laughs> yes, all of that. Definitely check out the um, Aurora's Masterclass. It's such a beautiful experience. And I've done the Masterclass. I've worked a lot with Aurora as well. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful experience. So definitely encourage you to check that out. Mm. I agree to all that. And I would love, should we end it off with like a tone together? And whoever's watching can tone with us too. Yeah, I'm feeling like maybe a tiny bit even more than that. If any light language wants to come through, I feel like maybe we could each offer just a little, little tone, a little piece, a little snippet of what that sounds like. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, go ahead, Nicole. Right. 
you're watching, just you can tone along with me too. And also you can just allow yourself to receive. And I am just gonna see what comes through. really interesting. I didn't, I've never made that particular sound or shape with my throat before. So I don't know if that felt different from anything you've received from me, but that was like mm, tuning into some ancient wisdom, I feel like. <laughs> felt like a singing bowl to me. Mm. That was like the, the resonance that came through. I was just like, whoa, that's what, that's what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play with that some more. <laughs> Mm, I'll go next, I think, yeah. Um, just take a deep breath in. Yahasiya nakantiya no shoko yasiya naka. La idikiya na nako o yasa idikiya naka na iya. La da ka oso mbada shiya sakiya na kare ya. Breathe in, just noticing what you're feeling in your body. Tuning inward, releasing the mind needing to make sense of it, and just noticing sensations, receiving the codes. Mm, thank you, ladies. Both of those were so tingly and activating, and like my crown is blown wide open. And that's the thing, it's we don't always need the English words, it's just the tones that carry forward the information that can clear, heal, activate, and uh, just support us in remembering more. So uh, I'll just close everything out and invite you to just take one more deep breath and let that mind be witness and observer to notice what's received by the body. Mm. <laughs> That's the fun thing about sharing those tones, letting them flow through if you were, didn't have your eyes open. Basically, I could not stop grinning because it felt so good. <laughs> it feels good to let that authentic soul language flow through you and out into the world. So regardless of how you are doing it, if it is through dance, through movement, if you're hula hooping, or if you're just making tones when your kids are driving you crazy or you're in a cold bath, we just wanna invite you to let that energy flow through and out of you and into the world so you can be that conscious creator and direct the energy in ways that are probably gonna be more magical than you can even just dream of. Mm. Thank you ladies so much for sharing that spontaneous toning and light language and this beautiful conversation today. It's always a delight. We'll be back next week and just sending you all so much love and we'll talk soon.